contract says to continue with the license you have to agree. do great things. Hold it high to the light of a path or add, or add it to others to brighten the whole world. The flame has hope of an advent. The flame of hope is an advent gift given to us that can uh, dispel fear, lift despair, and often promise and offer a promise of better times. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the hope we have received in Jesus. Likewise, we recognize that we ourselves are a gift of hope to many in this community and to many more around the world. Through the mission and service work in the church, we give hope to those who are hungry, homeless, sick, or in danger. We can count on us to lend support. Let us pray together. Loving God, Amen. Let's remember the mission and the arrival of Jesus in the world. We rejoice in the gift of hope. Help us today and every day to be grateful, to hear your word, and to do your will to fight for all of your loves. We ask this in the name of the one word you have been. Amen.
please join me in the call for today. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the proclamation of the word. reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah, Judea. In those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, Our Lord is Righteousness. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Our psalm today, our psalm today is number twenty five, and we'll read this responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph, nor let my tri enemies triumph over me. Let none who looks to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted in all the long day. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonials. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for him in return for all the joy that, that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face to face and restore what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all of us, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen our, your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father for coming to our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Holy God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that the day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man, the Gospel of Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we were going to write a play about the life of Jesus, I doubt that we would begin with the sort of readings that we have in this morning's lectionary. Many plays and movies begin with the story of a couple's life together and the preparations they're making for the birth, the classes, getting the nursery ready, doctor's appointments, making plans for time off, etc. But it's not until the fourth Sunday in Advent that we even encounter the Holy Mother and what she is experiencing as she looks forward to the birth of her first child. Instead, this morning's readings are a wake-up call. Later on in the year, we'll make a more sequential look at the gospel. But for now, we begin with the chaos, total disruption of everything. In many ways, this chaos parallels the disruptions we feel in our own personal lives and the world around us. Advent doesn't begin with a lullaby. It begins with a noisy and conflicted manner. The way of life is much for... For, for much of our world. Yet for all its vivid imagery, the gospel this morning is a message of comfort if we listen carefully. 
The key perhaps lies in our first reading from Jeremiah. He and many other prophets like him had announced that God would come to save them. And yet he's not writing in a time when the economy is booming and the country is relatively secure. Quite the opposite. Jeremiah makes his prophecy when he's being held in jail and the Babylonian army is at the gates of the city. The sort of experience described by Jesus in our gospel reading has occurred many times in Israel's history, and it occurs now in Jeremiah's time. The city and nation were about to be destroyed, and so Jeremiah does what prophets often did when the people were under duress. He presents God's promise of restoration. In those days, says Jeremiah, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. He even quotes his previous promise about the continuity of the line of David. Under the dire conditions in which he found himself, Jeremiah's words may have seemed absolutely absurd. How was God going to rebuild the destroyed nation and holy city? And how could David's line rule when the Babylonians were about to destroy the nation and take its leaders into exile. But what human beings can't imagine, God can. What human beings can't bring about, God can. From all the corrupt rulers the country had known, God will raise up a new king who will change the fortunes of this country. The new king will rule with justice. God will help the community build a very different world. We have to remember that for Jeremiah and the prophets, salvation wasn't something that happened primarily to individuals. It was something that changed a nation, the entire nation. If you were to ask Jeremiah what salvation looked like, he would probably describe besides being in the right relationship with God, being in a community that is safe under God's protection, and living in a way that grants all the inhabitants of the land peaceful and just relationships with one another. Jeremiah is reminding the people that God has not forgotten, or even worse, abandoned them. God will remain faithful. There is hope. Despite everything that they see around them, there is hope. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promises I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus has just told the disciples that they will have to suffer a great deal because they have chosen to follow him. It's not an easy life. They won't live some kind of charmed, idyllic life because they are his friends. Instead, they will encounter many difficulties uh, in life. But they are to hold on to what he has taught them. They are not to allow themselves to be caught in the, up in the worries of everyday life because he will come to them. For many of us, this gospel reading this morning sounds so exaggerated, almost remote from our experience. In today's world, though, many people describe going through very traumatic situations, the death of a loved one, civil strife in their home country, violence in their neighborhood, the effect of drugs on a child's life. If you were to ask a person who's going through a crisis how they felt, the language wouldn't be all that different. That's the way it feels. Their whole world is being shaken. Everything that once was secure and guaranteed is now in ruins. It's turned upside down. Everything has changed. Life's foundations have been removed. In that crisis, we need to remind people that God's love for us will never let us go. That God is present 
in whatever circumstances we face. If the last hour of history belongs to God, then whatever circumstances we face, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear the next hour. We are not dreamers with our heads in the clouds. We are realists who see life for what it really is. It's hard to continue in the service to others and the world without becoming overwhelmed by the sheer immensity of the task. Our new Governor General, Mary Simon, has spoken about the need for the ongoing work of reconciliation with First Nations people. This isn't a one-time apology and then everything is going to be okay, as though it could all be lost over if the Prime Minister or the right people said the right things. It involves getting to know people, appreciating their perspectives, and addressing important issues. By working and growing together, we can come closer to a common dream for our world. We can see that sort of vision that Jeremiah holds out to the people. This morning we lit the candle of hope. One candle doesn't provide a great deal of light. But the difference it makes is amazing. If you have the opportunity and it's difficult to find sometimes, it is a completely dark room. But just light one candle and see the difference that that makes. As Christians, we don't hope for what we see. The hope we have invites us to work faithfully in our world. Jesus, the light of the world, dwells in our hearts and kindles that hope. Amen. As we celebrate the 86th anniversary of the founding of St. Andrews this morning, we give thanks for all who have ministered here and for all who have attended this church, all who have gone before us. And we respond by saying, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for the gifts of skill, compassion, and healing that our nurses, doctors, paramedics, and all other medical professions give to everyone who is sick and suffering, both physically and mentally. We give thanks for the gift of good health and protection that we can all give each other by getting vaccinated, wearing a mask in public, physical distancing, practicing good hygiene. We give thanks for the gift of respite giving given to those who are caring for a loved one and may feel overwhelmed by their responsibilities. In our parish community today, we offer prayers for May, for Gloria Jean, Gloria Jean, sorry, for Lisa, Margaret, for Nancy Warbeck, for Jillian and Kathy, for Jean and Nancy, for Mabina, for Bill C, for Bill D, Sandy, for Jane, for Kendra, for Beth R., for Kathy, for Kim, and for Stephen, and any others you may wish to name aloud or in the silence of your heart. We pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. And the prayers, the litany prayers for the anniversary of a church. For the church universal of which these buildings are a visible symbol, Pray to you, saying, We thank you, Lord. 
for your presence wherever two or three have gathered in your name. We pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For this place where we may be still and know that you are God, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For the fulfilling of our desires and petitions as you see best for us, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For our past and a vision of the future that lies ahead, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For the gift of the Holy Spirit and new life in baptism, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For the pardon of our sins when we have fallen short of your glory, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For the Holy Eucharist in which we have a foretaste of your eternal kingdom, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For the blessing of our vows and the crowning of our, your, of our years with your goodness, we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For the faith of those who have gone before us and for our encouragement by their perseverance, we pr pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. For all the benefactors of this place who have died in the peace of Christ and are at rest. And we take a moment just to remember anyone and especially Reverend Robert this year. And we pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of all your saints, especially for St. Andrew, our patron. We pray to you saying, we thank you, Lord. O oh God, from living and chosen stones, you prepare an everlasting dwelling place for your majesty. Grant that in the power of the Holy Spirit, those who serve you here may always be kept in your presence. We pray, pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's exchange a sign of God's peace. Our offertory hymn is, I am the bread of life.
we'll join together in the prayer over the gifts. God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectations of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we have gifts presented to, that will be uh, part of the Christmas gift package for uh, the food bank. Let us pray. May the wellspring of compassion be opened in you as you reach out in care. May soothing words find a home in you. May tenderness bless you as you reach to comfort body, mind, and spirit. In the midst of fear and frustration, may courage be given you. When difficult decisions confront you, may wisdom inspire you. May patience keep vigil with you and peace of mind calm you. May your heart find a song to sing even when you are weary. May abundant love lift you and gratitude bless you as you live. The mission of care entrusted to you. Amen. We also have a prayer shawl to bless this morning, which will be presented, I believe, this evening. Mm -hmm. May God's grace be upon this shawl, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May this mantle be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult ones. May the one who receives this shawl be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. Blessed be. Amen. Christic Prayer 3. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my body, of the, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may become the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you prepared a banquet for us in your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God.
prayer after communion. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Announcements. Come on, Martha. I have the honor to make a very special announcement. Your wardens, Edie and I, along with Archbishop Catherine Boubinier, uh, Archdeacon, what did I say? <laughs> Archdeacon Catherine Boubinier, I apologize, Reverend Catherine, that uh, as of December the 1st, Reverend Edwin Ebsery, sitting at the front of our church, is appointed as priest in charge for St. Andrew's Anglican Church for at least six months. And we want to say welcome. And we, Idy and I, are most delighted to welcome uh, Reverend Epsery to our family. I could dance, but I won't today. But I'll tell you right now, the relief and the excitement, oh, woo! Homilies will all be yours, Reverend Epstein. All yours. Does anyone have any announcements they'd like to make this morning? I have something I want to say. Well, get over here. <laughs> I have two quick things, and I'll be, I'll be as quick as I can. Number one was I want to say thank you to Edie for the enormous amount of work she has put in with me to help try to keep our family together and to offer meaningful and spiritual worship. So, Edie, thank you very much. And thank you, Mark. And the second thing is... Um, there is an array of beautiful bags of gifts at the front here. If any of them are destined for the mission to seafarers, um, I'm just wondering if you would identify them at the end of the service and make sure they're passed to Sandra Addisley, as she will uh, convey them to the mission to seafarers to be passed on to our brothers and sisters who are seafarers visiting in our port. Thank you. November 30th is St. Andrew's Day, and it will be our 86th birthday, which you heard earlier. And so we're going to sing the blessings. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And our hope is that this community, this faith community, continues on into another 86 plus years. And it's up to us to make sure that it goes, but we won't be here for another 86, but other people will carry the torch. And perhaps we'll be able to have a fellowship soon, maybe even have a cake. Hmm. But we got a birthday present today, a priest in charge, and you already heard how happy I am and Martha as well. Mission to Seafarers would like your support. Marianne has posted the information on our website, 
and on Facebook. And Sandra is associated with this organization, and I found out from her this morning that any donations you wish to make uh, can be given to her between now and uh, January because they will just continue to give these gifts. And it's a time to think about the mitten, scarves, the toques, the socks, the mitten box is out there ready to accept any donations and Tom will be taking, uh, taking this box uh, by mid-December so we still have a little bit of time to add to that. Uh, by next Sunday you will need to make your decision about angels in someone's memory and Suzanne, will let, uh, Suzanne needs to know by the 5th of December what you, what you decide to do and she's collecting the money and you can also, if you cannot get in touch with Suzanne, you can leave a message with Joanne. Yes? It just doesn't have to be in somebody's memory. If somebody wanted to bless them to a family, it's not just a Okay, all right. Every year it's just said to be in remembrance, but it doesn't Okay, all right. So it has expanded. And it's time to think about flowers for Christmas, and you can contact Joanne regarding that. And we send best wishes to Mary Ann with the hope that she'll be feeling much better soon. Many thanks to Mike and his friend because they repaired one of our Advent candles that had a mishap last year. And now they all have a metal disc in them as opposed to the plastic one. So thank you, Mike. Thank everyone for their participation in today's service. A big thank you to Edward Barnstead, because when we finish and we go off and do whatever, he goes home to spend some time editing. I don't know if he's prepared to say how long it takes him. No. <laughs> Just put it this way. It takes him a while, and thank you. Thanks to Martha for the PowerPoint slides, because she's responsible for those. I don't know how to do PowerPoint. Okay, what else? There will be a worship committee meeting following the service with our priest in charge as of December 1st, but we're meeting today. And if you are able, take a moment on Tuesday to say a prayer for our church and continue to stay safe, everybody. Brothers and sisters, our morning worship has ended, but now may our service begin. Go in peace and love, to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is Jesus Shall Reign Where the Sun, Where Are the Sun. <laughs>
God bless everyone, and thank you for worshiping with us.